The facade of the Oscar C. McCullough School No. 5 greets you when you enter our museum. From the 1920s to the 1960s, this school served the children from the Hawville and White River neighborhoods. These were the most ethnically diverse neighborhoods in Indianapolis. It was a community school and provided free social services for students and their families, and even lessons on the English language. For most of us in Indiana, our families didn't always live here. Our ancestors came from other countries and emigrated here. Catherine, curator of cultural history, and Kisha, curator of social history, will help us learn more about the ways of immigration and the lasting impact of the people that took a risk left their home and made a new life here. During Indiana's territorial period and early years of statehood, the lure of land drew settlers by the thousands. These early settlers came largely from the neighboring upland south states of Kentucky, Virginia, and the Carolinas, with most of them settling in southern Indiana. They arrived here on foot and on horseback. Some came by wagon, and others made their way here by boat down the Ohio River. Indiana is quite interesting in that she was settled south to north instead of east to west like many other states. In the 1840s and again in the 1870s and 1880s, there were two significant waves of German immigrants coming to Indiana. Some were attracted to new opportunities offered them in America, as word traveled home via letters from family and friends who came before them, but many others were fleeing repression. And as Indiana became more industrial, new jobs attracted new immigrants. Between 1880 and 1910, Nearly 40,000 Eastern Europeans immigrated into the industrial cities of Gary, East Chicago, South Bend, and Indianapolis to work in the industrial plants. Many of these immigrant groups settled together in neighborhoods, retaining many aspects of their culture through ethnic organizations, clubs, and churches. These neighborhoods and organizations provided a support structure for immigrants as they settled into a new country. And many of these groups published newspapers in their native languages. In the early 1900s, Indiana had newspapers published in German, Italian, Polish, and Hungarian. Germans, Indiana's largest ethnic group, introduced their Turner societies to Indiana. These societies promoted physical fitness, free thought, and German language and culture. There were Turner clubs in Indianapolis, Evansville, South Bend, and other Hoosier cities. Before World War I, German was the foreign language most taught in Indiana schools and there were over 200 German language newspapers and periodicals published in the state. Unfortunately, many of these groups with their different languages, cultures, and religions faced a lot of anti-foreign discrimination too. Their ethnic and cultural diversity made them easy targets of blame for the state's troubles. And when America entered World War I in 1917, anti-German violence and intimidation spread across the state. Many families and organizations, and even Indiana towns, changed their German-sounding names, and all of the German-language newspapers in the state ceased publication. Unfortunately, much of Indiana's German heritage went underground and disappeared as older generations passed away. These artifacts belong to Vincenzo Pusateri, who was born in Sicily in 1887 and emigrated to the United States in 1910 and settled with her husband in Indianapolis. The artifacts are part of her dowry, which she brought to her marriage to Nicola Bondi. Vincenza sewed and embroidered these pieces with her original designs. They were passed down through their children and grandchildren, many of whom still live in Indianapolis today, before they were donated to the museum. Individuals from Mexico started arriving in Indiana in the 1920s. Vicente Garza started El Popular Mexican Food Products in 1927 in East Chicago. He came to the United States in 1925. Edward Garza, third generation, proclaims the business to be the oldest Mexican family-owned manufacturer in the Midwest. Born in Tampico, Mexico in 1928, Jesus Jesse Quintana first came to Indianapolis in 1945, but only for a short period. He finally moved to the city in 1951 with his wife Maria and their two sons. In 1958, he became a United States citizen. His vocal performances of Mexican folk songs won him praise from numerous fans. For those living in Indianapolis, the Mexican Social Club was formed by 1958, the Hispano American Society was formed in 1968, and by 1969 there was a weekly Spanish radio program. The Hispano American Center was formed in 1971, and it would later be called the Hispanic Center. 
as of 2010, according to the census, we can see the diversity that is reflected in Indiana's population with Blacks, Latinos from Mexico, Puerto Rico, Cuba, and other nations, Asian Americans, and individuals from Sub-Saharan Africa residing in neighborhoods throughout the Hoosier heartland. The African Community International Incorporated assisted people from 30 African nations who live in central Indiana, while the Hoosier chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League and the Taiwanese American Association of Indianapolis assisted new immigrants and strive to preserve cultural heritage. The lasting impact of immigration here in Indiana is the cultural heritage, the growth of community, and the development of businesses throughout the state. After hearing these stories, I encourage you to look around your community and even at your own family. What local events or traditions do you participate in that have roots from another country or culture? The people that came before us continue to leave a mark on our lives.